Hey, how you doing? Today's question is, can I break my habit without labeling myself an alcoholic? I think you should really focus on the first part of that sentence and not the second, right? Breaking the habit instead of landing yourself with this massive label, alcoholic. You know, I think you can use that term um, as a tool, but I'll talk about that a bit later. First of all, I believe in giving yourself as much power in any given situation uh, as you can, as much power as you need to succeed in what it is that you're setting out to achieve. So that's the first question you should be asking yourself. What exactly is it that I'm setting out to achieve in this instance, right? And we're not just talking about stopping drinking alcohol. That's the first step. It's only the first step. It's not the end result that we're looking for. We're not just talking about getting rid of alcohol. We're talking about stopping the flow and killing the habit and killing the habit forever, right? Um, we're not just subduing the habit for a while. Um, we don't want to go through the rest of our lives fighting the same battle over and over again, right? How many times have I done that in my life? I don't know. How many times have you done that? You know, how many times have you felt that you had an alcohol problem, you sorted it out only for it to come back uh, later on or, or you've how many times have you thought you've got it licked and then it's come back only for it to return stronger so this same logic applies to allowing anyone else to call you an alcoholic either right it's easy for other people to slap that label onto you because they don't have to go through any of the discomfort any of the process in order to to get rid of that um, all they have to do is speak the label you're an alcoholic because that's what the book says or that's what the doctor says or whatever so it must be true. So don't allow the expectations and opinions of other people to trap you, to box you into this narrow and destructive way of thinking about yourself. I'd say the same thing about any labels that are holding you back, right? So does it really matter what you call yourself once you get the job done, right? Once you get to that desired objective. I think that calling yourself an alcoholic puts you in a position um, where you're not only fighting against the label and all the baggage that comes with that label, it puts you into a negative state of mind. You start thinking about yourself with a victim mentality, right? It says that you're only stopping drinking alcohol because you can't drink like other so-called normal people. Like there's something internally wrong with you that's not wrong with them uh, and you're you're only stopping drinking because you are not a normal person, right? Just because alcohol drinking has been normalized in society, it doesn't make it right. You know, this is a, a drug that we're talking about here. So labels are things that we use to help us to try and understand the world, but they can also trap us in a very narrow view of reality, right? They can bend reality to suit what everyone else is doing or thinking, at least, um, what everyone else, what their behavior is, what is common in society. There's an old quote, I think it's Shakespeare, and it's got something like, um, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So the essence of a thing is not in its title, but in its nature. It doesn't matter what you call it, the truth is in the reality of what that thing actually is. So I think about the world alcoholic from my perspective as a tool, you can use it to if it helps you to change direction, if it pushes you in that direction, um, you know, like it, it points you towards getting the end result that you want. Think about how most people use the alcoholic word. It's put themselves in a box and um, they describe what you are and it's a box that you're gonna stay in for the rest of your life, right? This is a very narrow view of reality that has become a trap for these people. You know, what I'm suggesting is that you use the word alcoholic, use it as a means to an end, not as an end in itself, right? It's the same way I would suggest that you use the word recovery. When you recover from something, you've got a beginning to that recovery. Um, you've got a middle place, the place where the actual recovering happens. And finally, you've got an end to the recovery, a place where you have actually recovered. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what end result you say you want. It only matters the end result that is in your heart to do. You know, you can say you want to stop drinking as much as you want, but if you don't mean it in your heart, it's never going to happen. You know, if you, you have to fight against that 
um, that motivation, I suppose. So I'd use the word alcoholic to get me across the line, not as a lifelong label that is gonna trap me into a box, but as a motivational tool that allows you to make progress. Now, once I'm through a certain period, um, I'm gonna stop using that. So you start defining yourself as what you want to be, not what you used to be. So for me, I used the word alcoholic until I stopped. Um, it was a good motivation to put myself into the frame of mind um, of before and after. This was the person I was before I stopped drinking alcohol. This is the person that I am now that I don't use alcohol anymore. Then once I had stopped the flow of alcohol, I start looking at what's really going on. I've stopped the flow, now I need to deal with the underlying structures, right? All of those thoughts, um, all of those feelings, the ideas and the principles that have kept me drinking all these years, right? What are the words and the sentences that I've been using? What are the stories that I've been telling myself that have kept me trapped um, into the, the, the drinker's mindset, right? For want of a better word. What are the core ideas that I think about myself as a drinker? Who is it that I am as a drinker? What has motivated me to continue to drink? What are the structures that have kept all of this in place um, in my life? The structures that have enabled me to think uh, and to live this life without me mounting any serious challenge to the way that I was living, right? Knowledge and understanding, these are the things that are gonna give you strength um, to face and overcome any challenges that are coming your way. It's only by having a really clear understanding of the true situation that you're in that you can start to identify um, the specific problems that you face. And it's only then that you can start to develop effective solutions to those problems. If you can't properly define what the problem is, how are you gonna find the solution? You know, anyone, um, nobody can define alcoholic. The answers should tell you everything you need to know. There is no single definition. It all depends on this factor or that factor. So just think about the alternative, calling this a habit. Knowledge about yourself and your reality gives you confidence in anything that you're going to face in this journey because you know that you're on the right track right knowledge gives you resilience it gives you persistence because you know you're on the right track it's a strong place to be in when you can say to yourself um i know what the solution is i'm taking this step by step because i know what the steps are it doesn't matter what the roadblocks i'm going to face because um i know how to navigate my way through these roadblocks and the more I navigate my way through the obstacles, and there's going to be many obstacles, the deeper my knowledge of myself becomes, the better equipped I am to navigate future challenges and to kind of be creative in looking for and implementing the solutions, right? It's a win-win situation. So I think looking at this as a habit gives you much more power over yourself. It allows you to break it down as a normal function Right? It's something which everyone and anyone can do. You're not diseased, there's not something wrong with you, and there's not something that, that you can't solve. This is just a normal process that has normal solutions, and you can come up with those normal solutions. So look, we're gonna be doing some more videos this week around this topic, so um, take a look here for the next in the series of this videos. If it's not there yet, it will be, all right? Take care of yourself and I'll speak to you soon. I'm going to the Brits. Bye now.